Happy Nipple Podcast fans. This is your friend Lori Atkins back for another episode of the Happy Nipple Podcast. It's been a while, if you haven't noticed. It's been about six months, actually. We took a little bit of a break. Uh, We had a family medical crisis. My husband had a stroke back in April of 2022, and he has done really well in his recovery. But it kind of took a lot of energy um, from the family, kind of focusing on on him to get better. And it kind of took extra podcast juice that I didn't have to kind of give to anything else except for everyday fun- functioning and, um, and, and really just kind of focusing on him and our family and my business. So now I'm feeling the urge to get back to telling stories and bringing up great subjects and sharing information and education with my podcast fans. So I'm glad to be back and I cannot thank everyone who reached out and supported my family and 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 me and um, we're just really grateful and, and Bill is doing well. So if you're at all concerned, he's he's doing better and um, and we're coming along. So back to podcasting and do we have a good one for you? I am really excited to share my conversation with Caitlin McNeely from the Lactation Network today. Lactation Network has been instrumental in bringing lactation coverage to families who may not be able to get lactation coverage through lactation consultants on their own. Um, And it's really bridged the gap between families and expert professional care. So I'm really excited to talk to them and let them kind of explore the mess that is lactation coverage through insurance companies in this country. Um, It's not as easy as it seems. I think parents are shocked when they understand or they don't understand actually um, that it's not like going to your doctor's office and they just take your insurance and bill you. It doesn't work that way with lactation consultants in the United States. It should. The Affordable Care Act says that it should work that way, but insurance companies have rounded up um, lots of reasons not to cover this care, as you can well imagine. Nobody wants to really pay for anything. So that conversation is coming up, but our nip tip of the week and of this podcast episode is something that I have been um, seeing in the office hearing from my patients, I've been doing a lot of back to breast consults for families who have gotten off the breastfeeding track for one reason or another. They've been bottling their babies. Um, Perhaps the babies were a little early or they had a rough start to to birth. and, And for some reason, there's lots of bottles happening and parents want to bring babies back to breast. So there are ways to do that. And we do that a lot at Obaby Lactation and a lot of lactation consultants all over the world do this. But what I found myself saying often recently is breastfeed to breastfeed. And you're thinking, what the heck does that mean? So what I try to convey to families that are moving from bottling to the breast is as long as the baby is gaining and growing, you, you need to practice to breastfeed in. And very often, if parents are getting the message that something's up with the baby, was the baby early, the baby isn't gaining weight, there was poor early milk supply and now it's better, the baby had tongue tie issues or oral challenges, lots of reasons. But it's, if you want to get back to the breast, you have to try. So that being said, if you have good support and we're weighing the baby and monitoring intakes and outputs and all kinds of other things, and you have a trusted lactation professional that's monitoring things, you you need to practice to put the baby to breast. You need to make a mistake. You need to have a baby that doesn't have a great feeding. You need to trial and error a little bit. You need to figure each other out. You need to figure that latch out. What position works well? Um, did you not have a great feeding this time? It's okay. You can you can follow with a bottle if you need to, if that's what your plan has included. But I think my point is, it's okay to do it. 
Um, it's okay as long as you're checking in and making sure that all is well. It's a process. It's almost like handing off a baton in a relay race. You're handing the baton to the baby and saying, okay, let's see if you can do this. And there's a little bit of trust involved. And like I said, lots of support. So as long as you are in, you're, you're on a team of, or you have a team of supportive professionals with you and you're monitoring your baby breastfeed to breastfeed, skin to skin to skin to skin, you need to practice breastfeeding to create the skill set that allows more breastfeeding to occur, if that makes any sense. <laughs> but I, I, I found myself giving a, uh, recently with more than a few clients permission for them to try, to practice, to make mistakes, to figure out how this is going to look down the road and to put the baby to breast to then make it better to put the baby to breast to everybody practice, everybody learn each other, mom and baby, parent and baby learning each other's skill set and challenges and what works and what doesn't. So breastfeed to breastfeed is my nip tip of the week. And with that said, here we go in our discussion with Lactation Network. And I am thrilled to bring you all this education and information. Thanks. Enjoy. There we go. Good morning, Caitlin. Good morning. Thank this you so Lori much for Atkins. having me. I will talk over you. This is Lori Atkins of the Happy Nipple Podcast. I'm so glad to have you on today. I'm going to talk yeah. your ear off. But um, Caitlin McNeely is from a company that I really like and I am enjoying working with um, called the Lactation Network. And you guys are out of... We are based in Chicago. So our um, our headquarters is in the West Loop of Chicago. Um, and I have lived in Chicago all my life with the exception of going away for school. You did. Ooh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. But the Lactation Network is really unique because they are um, really kind of... I don't know, forerunners. I don't know what the word to use, but yeah, we try to sort of be industry, industry disruptors and industry oh, leaders. Yeah. It's nothing I don't love. It's an industry <laughs> disruptor, but today's podcast really is focusing on insurance coverage for lactation care. And so many people, including me who lives it every day, doesn't truly understand every ounce of this. Um, it's not equitable and it's not consistent and it's kind of a hot mess, but um, mm -hmm. I think it's important, especially on this podcast, because my goal with the happy nipple is to make sure that we talk about things that are really relevant in every scope of women's healthcare, not just happy nipples. <laughs> yes, we like happy <laughs> nipples and we were going to talk, we're going to have a whole nipple podcast and it's going to yeah. be so exciting. But um, one of the reasons that I wanted to talk to Caitlin today was to pick her brain about where the lactation network is heading, um, where women's healthcare and insurance coverage is heading as a whole and where our, where our messes are and, and how we can fix them. So, um, yeah, solving all the world's problems, solving morning. all the world's problems. That's <laughs> our job. Don't you know? Right. Right. So, um, you know, I became an IBCLC in 2011. I've been a women's health nurse for a long time before that labor delivery, all kinds of things. Sure. And I fell in love with breastfeeding care. And I remember in 2010, when the Affordable Care Act passed. And it was like screaming from the rafters because of all the preventative health jargon in the ACA, right? Do you remember that? Yes, the absolutely. ACA, I know. And they said, lactation net, you know, lactation, uh, breastfeeding care is going to be covered and pumps are going to be covered. And that's anybody who's listening. One of that's where your pump covered by insurance came from was the Affordable Care Act. And it also said it was going to cover breastfeeding care. And I'm like, well, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. No awesome. Worries. Awesome in theory. Yeah. Awesome in no, theory. Um, yeah. So tell us what that, what you, what you're seeing because of the ACA. So the Affordable Care Act was passed in 2010. Um, the lactation network, the first iteration of the business was a breast pump provider. And so we were called Ashland Breast Pumps and we provided breast pumps to patients. And this concept for insurance was really sort of easy to implement on their end because they're used to covering um, products such as, you know, a shoulder brace if you were to have a shoulder um, surgery. And so a code was implemented for breast pumps. There are three different types, manual, double electric, and hospital grade. And so all three of those were given a code. It was sort of plug and play. 
Um, what Ashland, you know, realized pretty early when I was brought in to start the breast pump division was that this really is a direct to parent um, company, right? Moms are really searching for the right breast pump for them. And parents are really doing a lot of research on um, Google and on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, really looking for what pump is best for them. And so we worked really hard to connect directly with parents and to help them select the breast pump that was right for them. Lo and behold, after they received their breast pump, they then would have their baby and they would call me back and they would say, I'm having trouble breastfeeding and I am not clinical. My background is in medical devices and um, in particular women's health medical devices. Um, and outside of having my own three children, it was not appropriate for me to clinically troubleshoot. And so the more and more calls I got from relatively panicked mothers and trying to guide them to resources in their areas, um, I realized that this is something that Ashland Health at the time and now the Lactation Network needed to try to step in and try to make some movement. Um, the language in the Affordable Care Act is very clear. It's that breastfeeding support and supplies are to be covered. The supplies part, we got down pretty quickly. So I, you know, I it was passed that. in like, 2010. I'm yeah. sorry. Yes. And then it really became commonplace. Um, you know, between 2013 and 2016, there was some education that happened. Parents were telling their friends. And so breast pumps really became implemented as the standard of care for insurance coverage. Now, to say breastfeeding support is relatively gray area. Because that's the language in the Affordable Care Act, right? It's just Correct. so big. Correct. It is. It is um, yeah, I think that you know, in the spirit of attempting to support new parents, the language was really just a little too vague. Um, and so, you know, the lactation network, we, we view that as the preventative care that it is, um, is supposed to be, that it is mandated to be. We talk a lot in this, there, there's a lot of conversation around breastfeeding. Um, you know, if, if breastfeeding isn't for you, your body, after you have a baby, you're still going to lactate. And this should be viewed as standard human health care, preventative health care for, for yeah. you. And so, you know, we really work hard to try to educate parents and let them know that this is mandated to be covered. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so the Affordable Care Act, it made, it gave us a lot to work with, um, but we're still fighting the good fight daily with different insurance providers and parents have a really loud voice here where they can be, you know, demanding this coverage from their insurance providers. They can be going to their HR departments and saying, you know, my pamphlet says that this is covered, but when I tried to get it covered through the lactation network, they said that your plan, you know, the plan that we have isn't working with them. Um, and so there is a huge opportunity here to continue to raise our voices, to lift each other up. Um, breastfeeding is not something you're going to do multiple times over in your life. You might do it, you know, one, two, three, possibly okay. more times. And each experience is so different. And so, you know, what can happen is you go home from the hospital, you maybe get some lactation care, and then things start to turn around and go really well. That by the time you get back to work, if you're fortunate, you might have 12 weeks off of maternity leave which is a whole other discussion. But um, if you are lucky and you have 12, month, 12 weeks of maternity leave, you might go back and forget how impactful that lactation care was. And you might forget to tell your HR department how impactful it was and that it really did set you up for success to come back to work um, with a great feeding process and schedule. And you're feeling confident with your feeding schedule and your, your breast pump and your um, your breastfeeding journey so far with your baby. And it's really important that we remember those things and that we we advocate for our colleagues and for parents who are younger than us and coming up in this in this journey mm -hmm. themselves. And so, um, you know, there's a lot of room for growth and and TLN is is certainly a part of that. And so that's sort of how we came to be. We 
We are a product of necessity. We are a product of the language of the Affordable Care Act, but there's still a long way to go. Yeah, there really is. And so I should kind of clarify for our listeners too, that may be um, that TLN covers lactation consultants in different states all over the country, Caitlin? Where? Yeah, we are located wow. in all 50 states and in, in DC. Um, we cover lactation care for a handful of insurances. And the um, the state by state is is mm. is a challenge, right? Challenge. So yeah. it's a little bit all over the map, yeah. um, you know. But there are there are some pockets in in the country where we have a lot of lactation consultants, mm -hmm. and then there are some where we have um, a, a little bit fewer, you know, which is to be expected in in more rural areas, perhaps. I, I think that's kind of a, a way to describe the profession as a whole. You know, it depends mm -hmm. on where I, I'm, I'm not sure how many IBCLCs are in the, in the United States. I want to say like 26,000. Yeah, yeah. Don't, it's don't it's close. Me. I think it's close to 20,000. Yeah. It's not, it, there's not a lot when you really look at that um, with those numbers. And then they're spread, of course, across the country. I think there's a heavy concentration in the East Coast. But, but so the Lactation Network gets coverage for individual clients, parents, Correct. Right. And, Correct. and then you, you, so a couple of ways, right? You guys try to, you, people contact you directly, correct? Correct. Yeah. Yes. That's so, interesting to me as, as yeah. word is kind of spreading. So, yeah, so word is spreading. Finally find you and then you find an IBC, IBCLC for them. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So, so a couple of points that you made there that I think I are, worth, um, are worth hitting on. I told so, you I talk a lot. <laughs> same here, same here. Um, so we partner at the Lactation Network with IBCLCs exclusively. So IBCLCs are internationally board certified lactation consultants. And so when you hear the term lactation consultant, that means that they're an IBCLC. It means something. It does. It does. It mm. does. You know, this, um, the, I believe the IB, the IBCLC designation came about around 1985, mm, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Yep. And so it's it's a newer credential. Um, time flies, but you know, it it is a relatively newer credential. And um, but it's one that is extremely important because IBCLCs go through considerable training. So they have um, you know, they sit for boards, they have to take different college courses, and they have to have a significant number of shadow hours, they have to have a mentor. And so this is really a long process to become an IBCLC. Um, we partner with a lot of RNs, much like yourself, Lori. And, you know, I've had IBCLCs tell me this was tougher than my nursing boards to get it, reinstated. It, listen, I just had to re um, recertify last year. And that test, and I remember thinking in the middle of it, because it was so anxiety producing, because you have to go to a testing center, it's a whole big thing. And you, yeah. you have to show your ID, it's just like taking your CPA or your bar exam and sitting there and going, this is hard. <laughs> like yeah, I was this is hard. after 10 years and it was still hard. Yeah. So I, I, yeah, I, I, I appreciate that uh, the lactation network recognizes the credential. There are a lot of um, excellent breastfeeding supporters out there. Uh, you, we love our CLCs. We love our, we love all of our CBEs, all the people who take breastfeeding education, but there is a different clinical level with an IBCLC. And I, it's, it's word salad to parents. So if parents, if you're listening to this, I know, I know this is hard, but it's worth to ask the questions about who you're getting your care from, especially clinical care. Like I'm sitting in my office right now. I'm going to turn, I don't have my scale, my baby scale over there. Mm -hmm. but like there's my scale. That's where that scale sits right there. And I weigh babies and here's my little office. I'll show it to you. Yeah, it looks amazing. Awesome. I love my office. But oh, the point of it is, is that this is what we do full on every day, five yeah. days a week. I have someone who works for me. We take breastfeeding care really seriously. And we have some babies who really need our level of care. And I appreciate that TLN appreciates that part of it as well. Yeah, absolutely. Something else um, with with TLN. So there are two ways. There are a few ways to um, to reach us. So the first would be to just go to our website tln.care. The other way is if you find a lactation consultant in your area, you could ask them, "Are you partnered with the Lactation Network?" And if if they are, then they'll give you a, a link to our program, and you can see right right from our homepage if you're covered through the Lactation Network for a lactation visit. Um, 
And if you are covered and you don't already have a lactation consultant that you are asking to see specifically, we will pair you in your geographic area. Um, and what that means is that we are going to find a lactation consultant. Our first option is to come to your home. And this is so important, right? In this, in this time that we live in, we have a mental health crisis, we have a formula shortage, parents are really struggling. And the idea of a lactation consultant seeing a patient in person, either in a beautiful office like you have, Lori, or in that patient's home, sitting down with a new parent, putting your hand on their shoulder, really observing their mental state, it cannot be overstated how impactful a postpartum visit from a lactation consultant can be in not only this parent's breastfeeding journey, but sometimes even to their core survival. Um, you know, we have some serious maternal mortality issues in this country, and a lot of that happens postpartum. And, you know, we, we are not immune to hearing stories on our end of a lactation consultant understanding how jaundice a baby was because they saw that baby in person day three before the pediatrician appointment and the baby was sent back to the hospital. You know, we hear these stories postpartum hemorrhages that are happening at home. Um, getting eyes on a patient in person is, is so, so impactful, um, uh, even outside of the breastfeeding journey, but I digress. <laughs> well, you can digress because I bring this up too, that very often lactation um, professionals are the first outside the hospital to see a new family, especially yeah. if that family has reached out for care. And maybe the pediatrician saw them 24 or 48 hours afterwards, but it was a quick visit in and out. Um, some pediatricians offices do um, postpartum depression kind of screenings, which is great. Some don't, um, but very often we're the kind of the first people who are seeing new families. And I, I've picked up high blood pressures that have been postpartum, you know, preeclampsia. I mean, I, again, stories that, you know, about jaundice and about bleeding and all kinds of mental health concerns. I mean, we, we see that all. And part of the IBCLC's training is also kind of recognizing all postpartum issues and referring where appropriate, obviously. Yeah, absolutely. It, it does make, it does make a difference. I'm glad you brought it up because it, yeah. I, I kind of talk about that a lot, um, about making sure that and in, in, even in my care, I make sure I say to the parent, okay, listen, once that baby's here, I kind of make a joke and say, everybody wants the baby, but we need to really focus on the delivering parent. Yeah. How are these, you? Yeah, How these are you? Parents. Yeah, they're just falling through the cracks. And, yeah. you know, something else to um, so, something else that ties back to the Affordable Care Act and coverage for breastfeeding support that I want to note. The historic the historic landscape for new parents or expecting parents as it pertains to lactation care, right? So if I go to my OB and I'm 25 weeks pregnant and I maybe approach the topic of breastfeeding, I'm likely to get a flyer to take a breastfeeding course through the hospital where I'm planning to deliver. Right. And any breastfeeding education is valuable. Right. Um, there is added value in a one-on-one -on -one prenatal consultation. And so- Yes. And so the reason that these have been somewhat neglected is because <laughs> love, everybody love gets to play with the big food. boob when they come in for yeah. the free, you know, um, oh, I'm sorry. And so, <laughs> no, no, I love it. So we have to have all the props these days. Oh, I love, love my props. So, um, yeah, you know, such a benefit of prenatal education, especially if you can do it one-on-one -on -one with a lactation consultant, which the lactation network does cover prenatal visits that also plays into that postpartum visit because if you have a baseline of a parent that you're working with and you can say, okay, you know, I'm sensing something is a little bit different or a little bit off when you then meet with them postpartum, um, the, the idea of having multiple visits covered by insurance, that also provides the lactation consultant with sort of a baseline for mood for, um, you know, how the parent is doing postpartum. So Ooh. that prenatal visit um, being covered by insurance is so, so helpful, not to mention it's going to set that parent up for success in terms of what to expect in the hospital, what One, to expect postpartum. Absolutely. One of my favorite things to do is prenatals because we get to know each other a little bit. Exactly. A lot of people in, in a private, I mean, I taught big breastfeeding classes at a huge hospital for years. I stood up on the auditorium and I did my spiel and it was good. Mm -hmm. But if, you know, 20 couples and they're struggling to stay awake on a Monday night, like, you know, yes, I, I did those classes. <laughs> and so but when I do one-on-ones, I find that um, I get, we get to know each other a little bit. They tell me things they may not 
be able to share with other people, complicated medical histories, complicated and traumatic birth histories that so maybe good. wouldn't get shared in a larger setting. And then we can check back. I can learn about who's in your home and what your challenges are socially or mental health wise. You have a long history. And, and so a lot of those people do seek out prenatal care because they want things to be better. I, Absolutely. I, I see that all the time or they just don't know what to expect and didn't even know. I keep people that didn't know they could get a prenatal visit and they're like, why didn't I know that? So know, trying to get I the know. word out is huge. I, I get so much satisfaction personally. And then I see so much growth when I can meet somebody yes. before the baby and say, remember, we talked about hand expression. Remember we talked about engorgement. It's okay. We're going to get through this. And they've heard that stuff before and it doesn't scare the bejesus out of them moving forward. So that's another way that you can see that growth of the parent um, yeah. kind of moving through that post those post postpartum challenges, but they've got somebody that walks the path with them. Absolutely. And then, you yeah. know, even going into your delivery um, having the contact information of your lactation consultant, right? Huge. So like, that's so amazing. You can even shoot them an email or give them a call and say, Hey, I've delivered. I'm going to be home in two days. What do you think about setting up a postpartum visit for day three, day four? Um, you know, this process is just, it, it's invaluable. It's um, it's, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about, it's not just one visit that TLN covers. Correct. Can you talk Correct. about that a little? Yeah, absolutely. And so all of our TLN patients that get approved through the lactation network, um, you get approved for six visits. And the reason this is so important, you know, yeah, our favorite is, is to set the cadence with starting with that prenatal visit and just getting the word out there, you know, telling your friends, Hey, this is covered. You got to go to this website and fill out your information to see if it's covered, because then we're with you throughout the course of your breastfeeding journey from prenatal through weaning. Um, and you know, hiccups arise, things change. You go back to work, maybe oh, all the time. Yeah, maybe your milk supply drops a little bit, but you have someone to call and say, okay, this pumping schedule that we talked about, it's not working. We need to right. readjust, we need to pivot instead of panicking and you know, right. being or, yeah, you yeah, got a lot of mastitis. Listen, the, yes. I can see sometimes on my website where what time people email me or send me a message, you can send a message to the website. I don't even, mm -hmm. it comes, it comes as an email, but, mm -hmm. and it's, you know, two eighteen in the morning. <laughs> like mm -hmm. yeah. I, and it breaks my heart that people are looking for help in the middle of the night. And I always, I always know those people are struggling because who's searching for a lactation consultant near me I know. at 218 in the morning. And it's people who are, it's not going well and baby is screaming and they're losing weight or they come back from their pediatrician's office and the baby's losing weight or not gaining properly. And they're in a panic. Yes. So yeah, that's absolutely you know, where right. I want any of my clients to be and have those, have those challenges when you're postpartum on top of everything else to try and find care. Yeah. And having those, having those conversations, um, you know, early and often with a lactation professional can really get you through some of those mm -hmm. lonely moments, right. At 2 AM where you're, you're, baby is screaming at your breast and you're tired and you're, um, concerned yeah. naturally. Um, yeah, the, the turnaround time to get to see a lactation consultant, this is often more urgent care. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we're trying to, we're trying to shift that paradigm to, to really fall under more preventative care, but it's a matter of getting the word out and sharing what is a lactation consultant. Who are these companies that can help you get, um, you know, coverage for your for your visit? And so TLN is really a um, we're just working as hard as we can every day to get the word out um, to different patients through different modalities to say this is covered. You are entitled to this care. It is preventative. You will not get a bill for your visit with these lactation consultants. You will not get a bill from them. You will not get a bill from us. You will not get a bill from your insurance because this is preventative care that is intended to be covered um, and so, covered at 100%. Mm -hmm. And seeing a lactation consultant in home, in an office space like yours or via telehealth are all very um, are all very practical. They are very helpful, mm -hmm. and so we don't ever want a parent to be considering, okay, do I do I reach out to a lactation consultant and then have to have a conversation with my partner of, okay, this is going to be two hundred and fifty dollars out of pocket, um, you know. Yeah, and we can try to submit it to insurance and hope to get reimbursed. We take that entire process out of the headspace of the postpartum parent because we know that they are dealing with so many different things. Um, 
you know, I just can imagine me having my first baby and I did not get any lactation help in the hospital and he was an emergent C-section. And so that was really scary to not have any guidance in the hospital. Um, I was very fortunate. I, I figured it out, um, which, you know, I talked to a lot of parents that feel the same way, but each of my experiences were so different. And I can only imagine coming home from the hospital you know, day two, because he was a C-section, I had five days in the hospital and my milk came in in the hospital. I always think of these parents that go Ugh. home and then their milk comes in and they don't have, you know, a nurse to perhaps try to try to assist them. And so, you know, it's just, it, we're, we're not getting enough care to these patients. We're not getting it to them early enough. Mm -hmm. And so we really, uh, you know, I can only imagine my train of thought went, went away from me for a second, but back to if I went home and I was struggling to breastfeed, I can only imagine looking at my spouse and saying, Hey, I think I need a lactation consultant. It costs $250 for them to come to our home. I can imagine my, my husband saying to me, well, I don't know. Do you need it? And in the postpartum brain, you're like, Oh gosh, no, need want. No. I don't know. I I can't sing a whole okay. life. I have baby blues. I'm like crying because I'm so happy, but I'm like, You're you know, I also, there, there's a lot that goes into that postpartum brain and okay. trying to make a financial decision of getting assistance that you are entitled to through your insurance is difficult. And so knowing that there are resources out there for you to just pick up the phone and call a lactation consultant near you, asking them if they're, if they work with the lactation network or coming to our site directly at uh, the lactation network.care or tln.care, we're there for you. And our turnaround time of getting you help is extremely fast. It is. I'm always it impressed. Is. It's like hours sometimes, not it even. I get emails from patients who call me in the morning. Uh, this is happening. Mm -hmm. Who call? Who call? Um, who call? O oh, baby lactation in the morning, or send an email and I send the link and I get approval and I can see them in the afternoon. I mean that's happened multiple times. Absolutely. So we ask our patients to sort of do a little bit of triaging. Are you emergent? Are you urgent? Or are you um, non-urgent can wait like five days. So an example of an emergent situation is, um, you know, you can't get your baby to latch. You are engorged. You are concerned about weight gain because you just came from the pediatrician, but you really don't want to introduce formula. Um, you know, it, there are circumstances where that is necessary. And that's why we want you to work with your healthcare professionals. Mm -hmm. um, but if you if you declare yourself that you need a visit within, you know, 24 to 48 hours, we can accommodate that no problem. And in the event that you are struggling to get um, a face to face, meaning in home or in office visit, oftentimes we can set you up with a prenatal that can at least bridge that gap because prenatal, I'm sorry, not prenatal telehealth, mm -hmm. we can set you up with a telehealth visit very quickly to help bridge the gap until we can get you somebody in person face with yeah. someone exactly right. and because of covid you know we live in this new world our ibclcs have been nothing short of rock stars to learn how to pivot <laughs> yeah. their businesses that have been yeah. historically very hands-on right like right. teaching someone how to breastfeed like exactly. parents you know be yeah. ready for for them getting up in your business um, you know, so having to big pivot boots. to, yeah, having to pivot to telehealth, you know, that was a huge, I, I was so impressed with the quick urgency with which lactation consultants really embraced that modality of visiting patients because yeah. Again, while we're working to get it to be more preventative care, oftentimes it is urgent and emergent care that needs to be given. And so telehealth, it is very, very successful. I don't want parents to think, oh, if I can't find someone to come to my home, that they're not going to get spectacular care. You are going to get spectacular care. Right. Um, you know, there are there are ways for lactation consultants to use props and, and such. Oh, yeah. We, we I, I would, yeah, in April, what, March of 2020, the world stopped, right? Yes, it did. We had to figure out how, and it went for like a week or two. I was like, where are all the pregnant women at? Because where I know that people are having babies, this isn't stopping. And then it started once we kind of figured out our online platforms, you know, I did, I think I did, I, oh, I had a number and I can't remember what it was, but it was like, oh my gosh, when I looked back and saw how many that we did online, you're right. I think we pivoted yeah. like the whole world had to pivot, but yeah, it was a scary time. Right. And especially right, for new we parents were able to, and then there are some lactation consultants within my peer groups that are real rock stars with 
with online um, telehealth, like you said, I, you can you know you get the light a certain way, you get pictures of the baby's mouth, you get people to move the camera so you can see the latch. Mm -hmm. it, it can work. It can. It can work. Yeah. Yeah. I over over eighty percent of the lactation network visits are done in person. Yeah. And I would say that's you know that's something that definitely sets the lactation network apart. Um, you know, is that ability to connect face to face in home or in office. Right. Um, but in that event where, you know, where telehealth is either the preferred modality or it's the only available modality, yes, it, only is, available it is successful. So don't, yeah. So I yeah. don't want any parents to be concerned right. about, about the, the efficacy. Um, but, you know, that in-person visit, I, it, it really is so valuable. I remember my sister had her first and, um, you know, she was doing great breastfeeding. I could tell her that my mom could tell her that, she but until her consultant her. came to her home and said, gosh, you're just doing awesome. Right. The change in confidence and the change in mood as her sibling was so obvious. Right. Um, and it was just so amazing to see, you know, something right. that, that we're so proud of at the lactation network to see it in, even in my own family. Um, you know, it just, it, it's so, so fun. And it's so yeah. awesome to just to really be making a difference for new parents. New parents are falling through the cracks and it's a tough time to be a new parent. Um, and so we're just so proud of the work that we do. And we're so proud of our lactation consultant partners like yourself mm -hmm. who are fighting the good fight every day and really trying to get the word out there that you have help. You're not, you're no longer just thrown to the wolves and told, you know, breast is best and you don't have any help. We are here to support yeah. you. The, 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 and, and I know that you get coverage the best you can with certain companies. And I know that there are a lot of details and those mm -hmm. are being, they're making vague general statements about getting coverage. And I know that this can really get down into the details and the weeds, but um, I know that there are certain people who aren't going to get coverage through you. So I am, I, especially Medicaid clients, it, mm -hmm. it, it, it makes me infuriates it's, it's infuriating not sleep at night mm -hmm. when we can have you know and we have our military families and mm -hmm. there's a large population that doesn't get easy coverage so i know all individual lactation consultants do the best we can in our you know and on the ground to try and accommodate families and put payment plans into place and discounts yes. and kinds of stuff but at the end of the day you're nodding your head you know what i'm talking about so mm -hmm. if people are listening who who don't think that they're going to have an easy go of finding care, what do you, what's your, what are your thoughts about that? Um, so for, for parents who don't have sufficient coverage, right. um, it's just a tough space to mm -hmm. be, to be frank. So I, we, we are fighting the good fight on our end. Mm -hmm. We are, you know, working to try to change policy from a policy perspective. I ask you about that. Is there any legislative work that you guys are doing? We or? do, we do. So doing? when we have opportunities to comment on, um, on bills that are being, that are being worked and oh, things good. like that. So we have, um, yes, we have considerable outreach um, to try to, to try to shift the, the paradigm from a legislative perspective. Good. What, TLN is doing specifically what we're focusing on in terms of trying to um, expand uh, access to care and to address the healthcare inequity in our corner of the world. We mm -hmm. started a grant program, and that is to support aspiring IBCLCs in areas that um, are in underserved communities because we need more lactation consultants in the BIPOC community. Um, and so our grant program, we extended 10 grants um, to different recipients who are aspiring IBCLCs. And so that's sort of, that that's a big piece of the puzzle, right? We've got to get more IBCLCs of color so that we can provide yes. culturally competent care. Um, so um, the Lactation Network is partnering with Melanated Mammary Atlas um, shout out to Nikisha Killings. She has created um, the most amazing database of different photos of conditions on black and brown skin. These yeah. conditions look differently, different on different skin. And we need our healthcare professionals, broadly speaking, but I'll keep it to IBCLCs. We need to know what does thrush look like on a black and brown breast? What right. does um, psoriasis, eczema, all of these different conditions, mastitis, et cetera. And so having, um, giving our IBCLCs access to that database has been um, very well received. 
Um, and then even further, you know, we are offering um, several recipients uh, the Black course. And so that is um, Lydia Boyd, her course. And so we are going to be offering that opportunity to several lactation consultants as well. So we're doing what we can there is significant work to be done in this capacity. Mm-hmm. It is not, it's not only lactation, it's, it's across the board. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we're doing what we can. Coverage re- remains a battle. We are fighting it every day with different insurance providers. And I'm very, very, I'm cautiously optimistic. Breastfeeding feels like a space that is um, I don't want to call it a hot topic because it always should have been, but it, it feels very, <laughs> it feels very relevant right now it you know, does, with, I agree. Formula, with the formula shortage. Um, it's a terrible medium to, to get our point across, but oh, yeah. you know, we really need to set parents up for, for breastfeeding success, um, especially in the current climate. We also, we know that parents intend to breastfeed. Unfortunately, at six months, less than less than a quarter of parents are re- reaching the goal of wanting to breastfeed for six months. And um, the new AAP, um, the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends exclusive breastfeeding for up to six months or for six months. And then, and then as long as mutually desired past yep. that, right. um, up to two years, you know, really trying to um, create some normalcy around breastfeeding over two years. Um, this is not unique in, in the world. This is more unique to the United States. And right. so um, understanding that that the health benefits are there, they are plentiful. Mm-hmm. And um, we really want to be able to, again, just support parents through that journey, whatever it might look like for them. Mm-hmm. I think um, keeping the focus on insurance coverage, because we know that state by state is different. Mm-hmm that alone is overwhelming for parents. Like over here, it's this and over here, it's this. And do Mm -hmm. I get coverage? But mm, I'm not quite sure. It's that, it's that looking at what does get covered and what doesn't, and it can be five families and every single one has a different situation. So correct. it's, it's, we're kind of in the ditches trying to figure out who gets what. And what I love about TLN is I don't have to do that myself as a provider. I Mm -hmm. just stay here. Mm -hmm. mom and dad parents yeah go here check out your insurance policy I don't have I'm not on the phone with insurance providers and the parents aren't on the phone with their insurance provider because that is a dance of insanity right yeah like to call any insurance but I like that you guys are kind of doing that for everyone so again in that headspace of postpartum that Mm -hmm. piece of it is is now you know they're not um super billing it and going for reimbursement and hoping and getting on the phone and calling back next Friday. And did I speak to Suzanne on the phone? That's done. And then we can focus on this. On the, yeah, on the task at hand. And then I don't have to have the weird money conversation with people. I hate the money conversation. Yeah, yeah. I'm a lactation consultant. I hate that conversation. There's no, there's no, did, oh, did you pay? And I have to invoice you and it's done. It changes the relationship, right? It, it really changes that, the relationship. I if think you that's were a good to, point. Yeah, because, you know, I, I always equate things to like going to the pediatrician. So the landscape for lactation consultants historically was cash pay. And we've already discussed that that's a hard decision to make as a new parent. So even right. if you were to get one visit and pay cash, you may or may not try to pursue reimbursement through your insurance company. That's a headache. Um, and not everyone is, is fully... Um, educated on insurance. I, I I mean, I still have, there's a lot of nooks and crannies there that I still don't understand. And I've been doing this for a long time. Right. Um, it's a lot yeah, of new families a, who've never had to navigate this before to get on the phone and also, figure out how to feed their baby. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's it's it, maddening. It's also a lot to ask of an individual lactation consultant who is running their business and trying to focus on the clinical. It's just not, can't do it. yeah, it's too much to put on one person's plate. And so the lactation network really we promote our lactation consultants and we we take this off their plate, but we also take it off the plate of the new parent. So anytime That's we approve point, a patient, yeah, yeah anytime we awesome. approve a patient, we guarantee that at 100% coverage. So you're never going to be approved through the lactation network, get a visit and then get a bill. It's not going to happen. Um, and so, you know, we, again, we're just really proud of that. But what it also does is it, it helps that relationship 
you know that your provider, the lactation consultant in your home is there because they're a clinical expert, their work is being valued, and you can have multiple visits with them just like you would be able to with your pediatrician. Yeah, you um, guys vet us. It's not like we're just some weird person who says, yeah, I'm a lactation consultant. You make sure we are who we are. Exactly, exactly. I mean, that's yeah, the other we thing. handle like, that credentialing piece for, for our IBCLCs. Right. And so that's that important. was a decision. Yeah, that was another decision made early on that we only partner with IBCLCs, not um, not because there aren't other um, breastfeeding specialists of value. That That's not the right. reason. Um, um, clear about that. It's yeah. because, yeah, it, it allows us to say, okay, there is a standard of care here yes, I think that we are good. very confident yeah. in at the lactation network. And so um, you know, that, that was a lot of that reasoning, but in the event that you are struggling as a parent and you need help and your insurance isn't, um, one of the insurance providers that we work with, you know, we can still connect you with a lactation professional mm -hmm. and oftentimes lactation consultants have a, a small, a small capability to do payment plans and, um, you know, occasionally a discounted rate and things work like with that. other so, insurance, some, with some insurance companies, let us work directly with them, but not many. Correct. Correct. So okay. I just don't ever want a parent who's struggling to hesitate to reach out to us, right. to try to um, call your lactation consultant. And, you know, I just got finished saying, I know a new parent doesn't want to call insurance, but be your advocate, you know, be your own advocate and maybe take that on in your nesting phase before you have your baby, That's right? Call your insurance company and just say, you know, I want this coverage. You need to tell me how to get it, where I can get it, because it is mandated coverage that you are entitled to. Mm -hmm. And so if they cannot provide you with resources, I definitely would recommend, um, you know, asking your pediatrician, who do you like for lactation care? Um, you know, oftentimes your insurance will tell you to go see your pediatrician. Pediatricians are not lactation professionals. They are not. They are not. I'm and clear um, about that. Yes, they are not lactation professionals. Um, you know, and I've been told the whole, a whole host of goofy things by my insurance company, just because I call from right. time to time. Right. To and if you me. call on Friday at 2 p.m. and then call Monday at 10 a.m., you could get totally different people with totally different answers. That's such a great point, Lori. Oh. Make sure you get a reference number. And this goes oh, for any insurance God. phone call. So right. anytime you call your insurance company, make sure you get a reference number, write it down, because then they can go back and listen to that phone call. So if you were told, you know, varying degrees of information, you you should always get a reference number. <laughs> That's a little tip, I know. I know. a little insurance tip. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of a lot of room for growth here and and TLN is fighting that good fight every single day trying to expand coverage mm -hmm. um you know and and bridge the gap in in equity equitable care it's uh, yeah equity is a huge part of this too because it's really not fair for one mom down on the same street that can get breastfeeding care and another can't and then and another parent here and it, it's just it's it's random and it shouldn't be it should be across the board absolutely and on that note um you know a lot of things i tell my parents if they don't have coverage is to you know budget through the pregnancy mm -hmm. um like i said I, a lot of us do some kind of sliding scale mm -hmm. um, for cash pay patients or for our medicaid parents or tricare parents um budget I, we can't work for free. I've been through that in my career. I think we all have. Absolutely. So, you know, we all, so, but I have never met a lactation consultant who does not have these conversations with their clients. None of us do this work to make a lot of money. We do it because we love it and we want to make sure that families have good care. So many, many times we can figure out something with people and just reach out, you know, re like you said, reach out, even if they're not sure with you, they can check on the website. And I'm sure you have a lot of dec declinations that you do for people. But I, what I like too, is that your, your, your email back to them is like, Hey, follow up with your lactation consultant, see if there's other options in your area. I often refer to APRNs or MDs in my area who have lactation care in their offices. And I know yes. that it'll get covered by Medicaid. So many oftentimes people on the ground have created our own resources to kind of get people that, that really need that care to, to get it to them. Absolutely. It may not be convenient. It may, they may have to drive half across half the state, which again is ridiculous in my mind. Correct. But, but I, you know, with my, in, in our practice, we do um, uh, visits in a physician's office that allows me to take patients from outside in the community. So when I have a parent who really wants to breastfeed, who has our state's version of Medicaid, I can mm -hmm. see them in an office setting. It's not easy. Again, I, I can only see them here and they may have to drive. 
Yeah. But, but at it, least it, it's it an option. It's not fair, but it, right. I think we've all created some kind of, um, a village. A, oh, a village and, and these, in these, you know, these convoluted things, but to try and make it work for people because it just keeps me up at night. It really does. Absolutely. I, the worst thing for me to do as a provider is to say, oh, you know, we don't have any, you know, we don't have any options for you. I don't ever want to say that to a family. Ever. Worst ever. thing ever. Worse. Yeah. So I think the insurance conversation can go on for many, many, yes. <laughs> many hours, but yes, I don't think we going to bore anybody. But listen, I appreciate you coming on and thank you so much. Um, again, would you want to tell, you want to tell people the website? It's the lactation network at <laughs> tln.care. Good. Um, that is our website. Yeah. So it's not .com, not .net, it's .care. So the Good lactation point. network at tln.care. And people can find out, um, and the landing page has all kinds of information about getting a visit, getting a pump. Absolutely. So just all you have to do is click the buttons, follow the prompts. The first one is check my coverage. And if you click on that, we will walk you through the steps and we will get you paired as quickly as possible. Um, and yeah, and you'll see a great IBCLC that's within our network. Awesome. I thank you for coming on today and talking about what your company's doing. Cause it's really, uh, there's not a lot of people doing what you're doing. And I, I think people appreciate that. And I know that my clients, when they know they have six visits available to them and rarely do we ever need that many, mm -hmm. but to be, to take the money conversation off the table, to take the, can I afford this off the table and just focus on baby and parent is a massive, massive yeah. thing. So it's really amazing. I appreciate it. I appreciate your time today. Thank you for joining us on the happy yeah. network. Thanks, Lori. I appreciate you too.